2020. I'm here with Rashawn Gordon of Gordon Gun Dogs, and I'm Randy of Desert Point Kennels. Rashawn, how you doing today? Pretty good. Feels good to be back in the studio, Randy. How come your chair is higher than my chair? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Can't, can't be having that. <laughs> so, in the world of news, there's a lot of stuff going on. We're just getting in all the coronavirus and now the marches and the Black Lives Matter and the police and um, Rashawn uh, said we need to do a video. So, Rashawn, what's your take on some of the stuff that's going on? You being a black man and all. I Is that a Trump hat you got on? That's a Trump hat. I'm a proud Trump supporter. And a, uh, a Democrat voting for Trump. I'm not a Democrat. Not I'm a, a Democrat. I'm a registered Republican. How come you're not a Democrat? The Democrats have done so much for for black people, right? Yes, like they formed the KKK. Um, they wanted to make sure that black people were not treated as equals, and they came up with the Jim Crow laws. Um, they've gone out of their way to keep blacks dependent upon government. I don't believe in that. I believe that once uh, blacks were freed in this country, that they were free to go and do and be as equal as anybody else in America. Shouldn't have to be dependent upon government. Shouldn't have to be dependent upon handouts. You know, that's that's just the way I feel about it. Yeah, you, know, you don't think it's been done on purpose, do you? I really do. See, that's where I don't I don't necessarily agree. But sometimes I'm a little late to the party. I always thought that maybe people were trying to do what was right. Sometimes when you try to do what's right, it it doesn't turn out as well as you might think. Such things as welfare and you know um, programs and and whatever. And now we're here in 2020, and instead of the world seem to be getting better, it seems to be getting worse. All the Muslim problems, all all the terrorist problems, and and things have been kind of flipped upside down with um, you know the cops now being the bad guys and the bad guys uh, be, being the good guys, but. You know, I've seen some of your Facebook posts, and I've seen some things I didn't didn't know before. One of them was is that actual the first black slave owner was black. His name was Anthony Johnson. He um, had indentured an indentured servant that I guess at the term of his indenturement, he was taken to court by Mr. Johnson, and was ruled that he could keep this guy permanently. Therefore, he became the first legalized slave in the state of Virginia. Wow. And then I, I seen another post where you showed that the first female millionaire in America was a black lady and a former slave? Uh, she, yes, her parents were owned by slaves. I believe she was born out of slavery, okay. but her name was Madam C.J. Walker. She was the first self-made female millionaire in this country. She became a millionaire by selling hair products. And now how can that happen in a racist country? How can a black lady become, how can any blacks get ahead? Doesn't even seem like it should be possible if you watch the news today. It does seem that way, but a lot of it is, I believe, a lot of black people have lost their pride. You always hear about black pride, but I don't see it anymore. There's nothing proudful, or prideful, I should say, about collecting government assistance, sitting at home, making babies, having men walk out on their family, and leaving these people to be raised without a father figure. That's the problem in the black community. There's no more men out there. Kind of hard to come back from that. If you don't, you, you and I both had parents, they stayed together, and our father spent a lot of time with with us, teaching us the things we like to do. Both Rashawn and I run run uh, gun dog programs. We both uh, have have kennels where we have German short hair pointers and we hunt. And we and do, Britney's. And he has a <laughs> Britney's. And I got stuck with some pointers, so I can't give him too hard a time. But you know, we have a lot of stuff in common, and we do a lot of stuff. We do stuff every day. We talk every day. And if Rashawn needs help. You know, I'm there for him if if he needs help. You know, if I need help, he's there for me. If I need help, he needs help. I'm there for him. You get the idea. So, 
you know, we've had a lot of chance to talk about all, all of this. Um, I, I was a cop in a small town, but I was also a youth counselor for the California Youth Authority. So I worked with a lot of staff that were black every shift. And I probably spent more time for, for many, many years with black youth, Hispanic youth, and, and white youth that were locked up than I did my own kids. And I did a lot of study in, you know, at the time. But sometimes when, you know, I guess a white person comes up with some answers, it's not like if a black person comes up with some answers. Because, you know, if I didn't have Rashawn as a friend, best friend right now, and I made some posts that would say, oh, yeah, yeah, you just, you, just, you know, you maybe know a black person or have known a black person. But, you know, my word really doesn't count for anything. But Rashawn's word should count for something. But... What happens when a conservative black man has an opinion? Oh, it gets really bad. Uh, I was, <clears throat> my my one buddy had told me that uh, him and his girlfriend were having an argument and he mentioned me and tried to give her my opinion of what, what it would be. And she says, well, it doesn't matter what he says because he's not a real black man. What does he know? <laughs> <laughs> Coming from a Half crazed liberal white woman. That's funny. I guess uh, I'm not as black as a liberal Democrat. Hey, you know, yeah, a liberal, uh, a liberal Democrat white person. Uh, yes. So you've grown up in a black family. You have black parents. Black, black. Unlike the that Bubba guy that's in the news right now, that found you know found a news hanging in the garage that that drives for Black Lives Matter, who's um, you know I, I guess his mom's white, and I guess. Capat, what the, what's the football? Kaepernick. Yeah, I think his didn't his parents, black parents, leave him, and he was raised by white parents. Yes. And then, what would cause someone like him, that was raised by by white people, and obviously was shown a lot of love, upper middle class too, to have a problem now with white people? Well, it must have been all that oppression he faced, you know, being raised upper middle class and. Getting to go to good schools and having <laughs> having things, it was just too much for him to handle. His girlfriend, I thought you said something about his girlfriend. Is she really Muslim? From what I've read, yes, she's Muslim. Whether she is or whether she is, that we can we can see a problem with that. Rashawn and I are both Christians. You know, that's in a, that's in America's history, and now we see a lot of problems. You know, from 9/11 to all the wars we've been fighting. A lot of young black men are coming out of, of prison as Muslims, and there, there seems to be a, a lot of problem with that. But anyway, we're, we're Americans, and we tend to want to help a lot of people. And, and sometimes that, that doesn't work out as well as it, sh as it should, for I think, for our, our country. But um, you've had a lot of bad experience with cops growing up? I've had a lot of experience with cops. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was all bad, but I've, uh, I've, I've had cops pull their guns on me several times. Yeah, how come? Well, because of mistaken identity. Um, they were looking for somebody else who I fit the description. Uh, one time, my ex-wife uh, called the cops because she knew I was sh shooting in an area that was kind of iffy. Right. And she got the call, so she had everybody roll on me because she used to be a deputy there and. I had a lot of guns drawn on me that day. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. Um, so what's your overall opinion of cops? I don't have an issue with them. I think they're very important for our society. Um, majority of the cops out there have been very good, very helpful. And you said with all the situations that I had guns pulled on me, guess what? I never got shot. Why? Because I cooperated with them and I did nothing wrong. And that right there is a big key factor in, in everything. Right. If you don't do anything wrong, you got nothing to worry about. But if you live like a thug, you're going to die like a thug. The black, black community is in a little bit of trouble. A lot of gangs, and, and Hispanics are, are in trouble, and a lot, of white, a lot of white kids are getting involved in crimes are in trouble. And that's never good for America because it doesn't matter if you're black, Hispanic, or white, or somewhere in between. We're all Americans, and when the black community has a problem, America ha has a problem. But where did we get to the situation where statistics like, you know, 6% of American population is black males, 
and a large majority of black males are somewhere in the criminal system. 50% of violent crimes are committed by blacks and there's an awful lot of gangs and an awful lot of violence in the, in the community. How did that happen? Well, uh, a lot of it I, I do believe is uh, breaking up families. Yeah. And, and that's and that's happening now with all demographics in this country. Right. That, and it's very sad, you know. Um, we were a very tight-knit family in my house. We ate dinner uh, at the table. We shared each other's day's experience. I don't see that with most households anymore. Right. Everybody goes their own separate ways. And then in the black community, it's there is just no father around. You know, one guy's got several different families spread out, you know, and, and they're bragging about that. They're called players, you know. Yeah, once you once you lose a father, once you break up a family, once um, you know, once you lose that, it's hard to get. It's hard to get back. I mean, the one thing that you know, your parents' parents stayed together. My parents stayed together. My parents' parents stayed together. Our grandparents, our grandparents, and uh, once that's lost. It's hard to get back. How do you teach a whole community, a whole society about family values when there, when there's no no family? So, what keeps what keeps the young blacks involved in crime? Why are cops having to deal with blacks, you know, so much? For being a small part of the population, you know, the blacks seem to be in, in big trouble. How come they can't get out of that? I think a lot of it is they don't want to. They get, you know, the 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 gangster life is glamorized in, in music and movies, and these people are in the inner cities and they're not seeing any hope out there for them. And the, what they see is the people who are succeeding in the movies or in the music, they're doing the bad stuff. They're dealing the drugs. They're out there killing people, and they're the guys that they're they have the cars, the women, all the glam, blitz and glamour. Whereas, if you're in the inner city and you're working at as a janitor, you got nothing, you know. Right. That's what they're saying, and they need to get out of the inner cities. They need to put programs in school that can help teach these kids skills. And like I said, they got to get the fathers back, and guys got to be responsible and want to actually be a father. Anybody can make a kid, but that's not being a father. Right. It's going to be pretty hard. It's going to be pretty tough. Most of the big cities are run by Democrats, run by the Democrat Party, and they have control of the programs that are happening in the cities. Do you feel like they're dropping the ball? Oh, they're dropping the ball big time. But like I said, I really believe that they want to keep people like where they're at. Because that way they can come, oh, well, we'll give you uh, uh, something else or assist you in another way. Instead of saying, hey, you know what, let's get you out of here. Right. You know, they want to keep them there because that's the votes, that's what keeps them in power. And if they got somebody who was conservative, God forbid if they made the place, you know, inhabitable and livable and get people jobs and back on their feet. They don't, you know, Democrats do not want that. That's why the blacks are still on the today's plantation. Wow. So, now, we've watched Trump from from the beginning. We both voted for him. And we watched everything that's happened to him. I, I would say that most Democrats would believe that most of us Republicans are losing faith in Trump and don't support him and he hasn't been doing what he promised and he hasn't been doing what we Republicans want him to do. What do you think? I think he's gone above and beyond. In my opinion, he's the best president in my lifetime. So you still strongly support him? Yes. Yeah, so for the people who are out there that think that Republicans aren't supporting Trump, that, that his base isn't supporting him, it's not true. I personally have not lost faith in him at all because he's kept the promises. And, you know, as, as a young black man growing up or a young black female, are they kept down or can they achieve anything in America that they want to achieve? Now, I was kind of always raised in good old rural America. But you and were from military, California. And, and military bases. Yeah, Lancaster, when we moved there, was a pretty small town. Okay. So my opportunities were different than a lot of people, say, like in L.A. or Detroit. But 
My parents both grew up in the ghettos of Pittsburgh. My dad joined the military, ended up marrying my mom. He got skills in the military, which led him to a career working for NASA. So he got out. Right. And if he can do it, anybody can do it. You got to have that want to. And like I said, you know, blacks have lost their pride. It's easy to sit around, drink, get stoned, and do nothing, or go knock off somebody, go steal, than it is to actually want to improve your life. They're, they're, they're helping themselves by temporary fixes. And it's exciting. Most, most young men, you know, as a counselor in the Youth Authority, most black men, white men, Mexican men, white men, kids, young men, start to get in trouble when they're about 12 years old. Because at 12 years old, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, hormonal, I suppose, and, and it's about excitement and new things, and, and they start doing more stuff in the gangs, and they belong to the gangs, and that, that takes the place of the, the father you, you were talking about. You know, now they have a family, it's, it's the gang. Uh, but I mean, as far as, as prejudice goes, you know, have you ever had, I mean, as a black man growing up, what prejudice have you been shown? Well, growing up in my, my area, I, I really wasn't exposed to it. Yeah, it's fortunate because uh, on military bases, that's not tolerated. And Lancaster at that time was mostly made up of military men. But you've traveled. You've been all around. Mm -hmm. You've talked to a lot of white people, a lot of people in general. In the dog, in the dog world, we deal with a lot of people. You know, so, the Southerners have a lot of dogs, and they're definitely dog people. And you've dealt with a lot of white men from the South, the North. You know, you you go out in the community yes, now. all the time. I mean, you you've probably been called the N-word a lot of times. A few times. Right. And and as as an adult now, uh, I didn't really experience racism until I was probably. 25, 26. Right. And, you know, and I'm, I'm married to a, a white woman. And when we moved to Mesquite, Nevada, uh, yeah, I, I had threats made on me, on her, both our lives. I mean, it was, uh, it was pretty hairy. But, you know, we worked through it and we became a part of the community. I, I didn't have hatred going, oh man, I, I don't like this or these white people, this or that. I just put my head down, kept working and carved out my little notch in the world there and, and actually got a lot of people to like us and support us. Okay, You think it's harder, you know, a young black man grows up in, in the cities, he, other than school, his biggest threat probably isn't from white people. His biggest fear of being killed or hurt probably comes from another gang member, another black person. I mean, are whites out there killing blacks? I'm sure that there's some, but uh, <laughs> not, not, not at the extent of blacks killing blacks. Yeah, that's that's a that's a pretty big thing. So anyway, it doesn't. I mean, we talk a lot and we see a lot on on the news that it's a race. You know, it, it's about race. I think it's about hate. I think it's about bad people. I think that that good people that love people, skin color is not not a problem. Um, you know, we see a lot of whites going. It looks to me like they're going a little overboard. You know, we see these riots and we see a lot of white people in the riots, and and we see it seems that the media is spurring that stuff on. What's your thought on some of that? One, I think Black Lives Matter has got more white members than black members because <laughs> I haven't seen any. Right. And, <laughs> and the other thing is um, the media is definitely making it to where more and more people are getting involved. And there's this guilt movement too. Guilting white people to, I guess, for the sins that their ancestors did with slavery. And that's insane because there's nobody today that's responsible for that. Yeah, what's the odds of even a, a white person even having an ancestor that, that was? I mean, I would think that the slave owners would be fairly well to do, but, um, you know, I mean, a lot of people are coming in, a lot of white people have transferred into America, 
and you know they their ancestors weren't even here at the time. But anyway, as a as a black person, you feel maybe you government needs to give you some money. Maybe we need to give white people need to give you guys some money to make up for all the shit that we did to you. No, I don't. Now there was a deal at the end of slavery where. Uh, the freed slaves and their descendants were promised uh, 40 acres and a mule. Uh, to my knowledge, nobody had received that. So if they want reparations in that form, they right. should be given a check of what it costs at that time for 40 acres and a mule. That's probably about 50 to 75 bucks. <laughs> well, if, they were, if that was going to happen, they ought to give them the price of what 40 acres and a mule would cost today, but it would be only given to the black people, I suppose, at the time. You said something about the blacks were offered a chance to go back to Africa. That, that can't is, be true. Is that, that is true. They were offered uh, to stay here, get their 40 acres and a mule, or passage back to Africa. And some of the Afri or the slaves took that, and they actually formed a, a place called Liberia over in Africa. And for a while, it was a very prosperous nation. I have no idea what the status of it is right now. Right. How, how, do, you, how do you feel about slavery in the past? I mean... If your ancestors were in Africa and they were captured probably by other Africans and somehow white people got involved and you got here to, to America, you're probably not happy about that. Actually, I'm blessed by it <laughs> because, and that may sound crazy, because slavery is very bad and it's a dark spot in, in the history of the world, but... I wake up every morning thinking I hit the jackpot being born here. There you go. Because I see what Africa is. No, I don't want to live there. You can't drink the water. The place is just, it's crappy. You know, here in America, I can say things. I can go out in the street and protest like an idiot. And nothing happens here. Go, and, go try that in Africa. See what that that happened. Say you don't like uh, whoever the leader is, and see how long you get to stay out on the street. People are bashing Trump and throwing things and burning stuff, and they get to do it. We live in the greatest country in the world. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, we do. You know, you think that the best that people could do is right wrongs. You know, it looks like America has tried to right a lot of wrongs. And they had made a lot of mistakes, but then again, slavery happened in around. I mean, it, the Civil War was around 1860, 1863, and uh, you know, the last state, or the, at least the second to the last state, Alaska, became a state in 1959. So America was just being formed. You know, when slavery started, it wasn't America; it was England. England owned. The colonies were English colonies, not American colonies. When America formed the colonies, they didn't want slavery. But you couldn't get all 13 colonies to get involved because some of them were slave colonies. So it was, a, it was almost a necessary evil that if you wanted to form a country, you had to bring in the slave states, and we'll correct the problems after that and, that, and that, and that's what they did. Another thing we think about, you know, we think about modern times where we have everything now. Back when that happened, there since slavery, we've had a few advancements, like a couple, like what electricity, <laughs> indoor plumbing, planes, cars, you know, um, light bulbs. So we we've came a long way. So th those were you know those were times, and and we did a lot of things wrong. But like Martin Luther King said, you know, he wanted his four children not to be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. And right now, the content of the character of a lot that's going on in the black community, I don't think I don't think Martin Luther King would be happy. You have black skin, but you have great content of character. A wonderful person, an honest person, a hard working person, a person that would drop whatever they're doing at the drop of a hat to go help them. To go just right now, what can I do for you? Fast to laugh, having fun, doing things that that you like that you like to do. But that's not what's going on in a lot of America. There's a lot of evil people out there. We watch a lot of the stuff that's going on, a lot of crimes, a lot of, of whatever, and it's not 
It's not white against black. It's good against evil. It's it's good against bad. It's you know there's a dark side to people. There's a dark side to a lot of the stuff that's going on. You know there's love up here and evil evil down here, and we see a lot of that. And it's a shame that when things are going bad that we have a society and a group of people that are saying that's okay to do. You know, the white people are to be involved in the looting and and that you're you're going to say the cops are bad. You know, we need we need police reform. We don't need police reform. I went to the police academy 40 years ago. 40 years ago we were taught what you're supposed to do and what you weren't supposed to do. You know, I've never beat anybody up. I've never I've never had to kill anybody. But I also did not have to go through a lot of the stuff that the cops are going to go that are going through now. But statistically speaking, it's a small it's a small percentage. We know arrests are going to go bad. Cops are going to make mistakes. People are going to get killed that shouldn't be killed. We know there are going to be cops out there, both black and white cops, because they're people. They're going to kill somebody wrongly. We know there's a percentage of cops that could be involved in all kinds of criminal stuff. But it's a very, very small, it's a very, very small percentage. We also have a criminal element that's a very, very high percentage. So these cops have to deal with that. How would you like to be a cop that you, you don't even get to initiate your calls? Meaning, I don't get to go out and find what crime is going on. I'm dispatched to every single call. Every single call has to go out and I'm dealing with violence. You're dealing with gang members. You're dealing with people who don't like you. People that don't don't care. Another thing too is is if you grow up in the gangs, a thug, no father, like you said, and you get into juvenile hall and you're 14, 13, 11, right around there, and then all of a sudden you go to the youth authority after that, and then you go to prison, and you're used to being in in the system. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. Because when you go in, it's old home week. Rashawn and I don't want to go to prison. Nope. It's not going to be a pretty sight. So it's going to be really, it's a deterrent. We're, we're, we're not going to go out and protest and break something and because we're good people, but we also don't want to go to jail. A young black person or a middle-aged black person, a male, he's been there and done that. So a violence can become easier to do. Easier to get up in somebody's face, easier to get in a fight, easier to steal. Because the worst thing that can happen is I could go back to prison. If I go back to prison, guess what? I'm going to be with all of my homies. And you don't think that, but you know, in the back of somebody's mind, it's you know, it's there. So the cops have an extremely tough job. It's not going to get easier. Now they're not getting the support by the the you know by the communities. Now. The, the media is making everything look like that's okay. So now you gave a whole group of people, both black and white, almost the green light to go ahead and do whatever they want to do as far as violence goes. Where does, you know, where does, where does all this end? But anyway, we just wanted to, you know, take a minute and throw a lot of that stuff out. Get Rashawn's view because, you know, Rashawn is, is changing lives. His post are so much more powerful than my post. I mean, geez, I, I, I'm like from the worst group in the world. I'm a gun owner. I'm a Christian. You know, I'm white. I'm male. I hunt. I fish. And it's like, you know, only people are going to agree with me for the most part are the people that already agree with me. Rednecks. Rednecks. Yeah, exactly. You know, the person that has been to college, well, I've been to college, but the person that's been to college is more refined and is a Democrat and think everybody's racist. I mean, you'd think, you'd think why, am, why am I not racist? I've never been racist. I've worked with wonderful, wonderful black people, and, and every single one of them that I would ever work with that probably will watch this, and, and even some Facebook friends that will watch this that were inmates. You know, we'll say we'll say that I've dealt with Rashawn enough. He knows we can joke about a, a lot of things, and we do, <laughs> and, we de and, we, and we and we definitely do. But I would much rather help Rashawn as a black man than any white person that doesn't have the same values that I have. I will I will go out of my way to do anything for Rashawn and Melissa, just exactly as he's a brother that I never had. 
All right, so we were talking about Obama. It really feels like, and maybe it was just the timing, but it sure seemed like Obama was on the wrong side of a lot of these racial issues and actually caused more problems. And I know policemen at, at the time, and they would tell me how hard their job got after Obama's administration, during Obama's administration. It was almost like Obama's administration had given people the right, the thought in the back of their head that cops are bad. And you know, and then cops were treated bad. Good cops that have never done any anything wrong, which is the majority of the cops. How do you feel, Obama has? Uh, I believe that his administration really did a, a big deal on dividing the country racially. But you you more think stuff like that has happened because you think the Democratic Party. I mean, Rashawn's much more into this than I am. Is is doing this on purpose to actually become a socialist? Yes, they're putting they're Communist. they're keeping people down like that to, to to move forward with their socialist agenda, and you probably said it is probably want, they probably want full blown communism, but watching what what's happened over the last few years it's it's crazy. We went from being a very prideful nation to where people wanted to go to work to now they just want handouts. It has to be done on purpose. They're not out promoting things for getting jobs started. They're not bringing jobs to communities. They're just giving more benefits. Does it seem to you like the Democratic Party has just really focused on nothing but impeaching Trump, getting rid of Trump? Yeah, and you know, <laughs> and that right there is a huge thing that people, if they would open their eyes, Trump has fought from day one, the day that he went to the White House, to every day since, but the man has still accomplished so much. How much would he have accomplished if he was actually just left alone to do his job? And that way, if he would have done his job unharassed, and the majority of the people thought that he did a bad job, guess what? Election time comes, he get voted out. Okay. I wasn't an Obama supporter. Okay. Me either. I didn't go burning no cars or go shoot up no places or anything like that. I did my 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 right to go down and vote to get him out of office. It didn't help. He got another term. But that's the way things are done in this country. And that brings up a good point. When was when when Obama's first term and, and he was running against McCain we had, I had family members, and I knew Democrats, that 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 voted for him, you know, and, and even even independents, you know, that that voted for Obama because they they looked at him and they thought this is a, a great American, this is a person that's going to do right by America, this is a person that's going to do better than Bush did, and they voted for him. I, I didn't see it. So I didn't. I never voted for him because I just didn't see it. Because I, as a hunter and o owner of guns, for one thing, you know, I, I want the Republican Party. But as a Christian, I can never vote Democrats because I can't vote for anybody that supports abortion. It just is not. It's not going to happen. So, um, but but I watched Obama, and the difference I think between the average Republican and the average Democrat is. Um, we wanted Obama to succeed. You know, I didn't want him to fail if he got in there and did the job he wanted. And a lot of times, in, there was, in, in a, a lot of administrations, there wasn't a difference between Republicans and Democrats. Right. If one Republican got in, he was going to do pretty much about what the Democrats did and vice versa. It hasn't become until really recently, I think, that, that there's really a, a, a total uh, change of directions on which parties where they each party wants to go and I wanted Obama to succeed and it looked like when he started off and from what I've heard from some of the inside stuff he he wanted to do better and he and he started to do some good things and I would ask the people who voted for him well, one was my uncle and I asked Mike I said How, how's he doing he, you know he's trying and you know, ask him a little later you know How, how's Obama doing he said you know I think I think he's trying and I told I told him, you know, you don't understand. The Democratic Party wants to take your guns. No, I don't think that that's true. Because, you know, at the one time, the Democrats and the Republicans were, were closer 
on on guns. You know, there was a lot of Democratic hunters, and probably still are. But the divide's getting getting bigger. And I said, you you understand that Democrats want to take your hunting and they want to take your guns. And he did he didn't believe it. Even in being a Californian, he did not believe it. And then they did. They they took they took some hunting rights away. Um, hunting bear with um, dogs was one of them. And then he watched the direction of the Democratic Party, and he watched Obama, and he watched the directions. And I asked him later, how, how, is, how is Obama doing? He says, Obama's doing terrible. And the direction Obama did and the things that happened led that part of the family. you got to realize, my mom's from the South. We were Democrats on mom's side. My grandfather was a, a Democrat. And so the Democratic policies you know, the Democrats were the direction that they usually went. But I think by Uncle Mike's time, my mom's time, it was more of who the individual representative. You know, vote for Kennedy, vote for Reagan, you know, one Democrat, one Republican, but vote for the man, not necessarily the party. And I think that's what happened with Obama. We're voting for the man, and the man turned out to be the, the party. And so a lot of Democrats, a lot of Democrats have left the Democratic Party to vote Republican because of the direction that the Democrats are taking, you know, America. And I think Obama, you know, I think from, you know, rules are radicals, the people he hung out with, the direction he was going, his background, where we watch what the Democratic Party wants. Um, I, I, I think that that's going to be a big problem. And right now they're tied to the media. And it, how long has it taken if we watch everything that happens? I remember when they were, when Trump was going to, was involved in Russian collusion. He has to be. Every Democrat, every night. And they got more evidence. The hammer's fixing to fall. Um, any day now, Trump's going to be indicted. And Trump did this, and this is coming out. You know, it wasn't true. All the way to Flynn, it wasn't true. None of it. None of it happened. None of. None of it. None of it was true. I think America started to see a lot of a lot of that stuff, but the media just hammered and hammered and hammered a, a false narrative, something that absolutely yep. wasn't true. And so now we see where we're at now. You know, who kneels at a national anthem? You know, who who does this? I mean, if you're a Christian and you kneel because you're praying to God. In a, in a football game, they're going to tell you to get your butt up. You, you can't do that. That you're going to kneel because you're, you know, some a, a, a belief somehow that the blacks are being treated unfairly by cops or whatever the narrative is, and you're going to kneel in a national anthem like that's, like that's the time. And then we're going to take flags out, you know, the Confederate flag. Is the Confederate flag, is that, um, the throw up red flags for you? No. No, it's a flag. It's part of our nation's history. Yeah. And again, you know, our, our history may be tarnished, but history's there for people to learn from the mistakes of the past so they won't be repeated again in the future. Now, I guess that offends some people, but... Feelings are going to be hurt because there was a hurtful time in America. But then you can sit there and go, well, you know, that that was then and this is now. And we've worked away from that. And feel good about it, knowing that you're never going to go back down that road again. Oh, well said. But, you know, I'm glad they got Aunt Jemima off that shirt bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how did you feel about having a black lady on a, on a syrup bottle? You know. It was, uh, I, I thought it was actually a very good thing to show people, especially black people, that here was a lady, again, I, I believe she was a slave. I don't or, or, you know, just born out of slavery. Right. Um, who made it. Who actually made a good living for herself. Now, when I went over to have pancakes at your house the other day, because I evidently make better pancakes than you do. Much better pancakes. <laughs> Aunt Jemima was on that syrup bottle. Yeah. I, I, I didn't even like when they took the, the other lady, Aunt Jemima, that looked more like the real Aunt Jemima, and they changed it for this skinnier black Aunt Jemima. 
Yeah, you, Aunt Jemima went to the gym and didn't eat her pancakes. <laughs> when you see the old Aunt Jemima, the old the lady that was actually the, the real person that, that they used, um, that was uh, well educated and extremely smart, and and they used her. When you look at a plump black lady, do you, do you what comes to your mind? That she was a slave, and this is stereotypical crap, or she's a pretty good cook? Well, to me, Aunt Chop, Mom would look like a maid to me, <laughs> okay. but okay. yeah, I, I look at it as being a good cook, you know, and uh, she kind of, uh, you know, resembled my mom the way she'd dress in the kitchen. Oh, right. Right. So it brought back things of home and home cooked meals and right. all the goodness in life. Well, uh, Uncle Ben, oh, that's a different story. Right? His rice is really racist. <laughs> yeah, he's got racist rice. <laughs> racist rice. White rice. Is rice. <laughs> okay, but they did, they have done some really good things, right? They've taken those guns away from those cartoon figures. Elmer Fudd was a little reckless with his guns. <laughs> and so is Yosemite Sam, just always blasting the dirt. <laughs> Well, and uh, but the video games, at least the video games for the kids play now, like Grand Theft Auto. They still Auto. get to keep those. You, oh yeah, you get to keep those, and rob people, knock them down, and take their cars and shoot them, and and all and all of that kind of stuff. Um, Black Lives Matter car in NASCAR, so you can have a Black Lives Matter car, but you can't have a Rebel flag, and you can't have. A mega. I see you're wearing a mega hat. I can't believe well, that. How racist. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope we can keep America great again. It's <laughs> it's it's pretty tough for the stuff that's going on. So, you know, when you watch what's going on with the looting, is that helping black people? No, and and it's destroying their image to everyone. And you know, like Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben. Right. I've noticed that the, the history figures, C.J. Walker, I mean, all these people who made something right. of themselves and should be inspirations for black people. How come you just heard about C.J. Walker in 2020? How come in all the history that you've learned in school, you didn't know about her until now? Right. It's like all that stuff is being hidden, taken well, away. At least they've, they've eliminated Gone with the Wind. Oh, yeah, yeah. We don't want the woman, the first black woman to ever get an Academy Award. We don't ever want that to be known. That that right there was a huge barrier. That's something that should have been celebrated in Hollywood, not taken away. Yeah, I mean, but you can still watch Django. Yeah. There's nothing racist about that film. <laughs> Good, clean family fun. Uh, well, People should watch Blazing Saddles. You want to be offended? Watch Blazing Saddles. You're offended by it, right? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. It looks like the it honestly looks like the United States has lost their mind. I mean, honestly, I mean, we're fighting wars. amongst ourselves. Yeah, yeah, we're we're fighting we're fighting these wars overseas, you know, to protect America here, and then when we get back here. We're, we're fighting, uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm not fighting anybody, but it's like all this stuff's going on, and how many, this Floyd guy's a criminal, right or wrong? He got shot. We well, got choked. He got choked, yeah, he didn't get shot. Okay, so, let me back up, so we might edit this part. So, <laughs> you had this black guy named Floyd, and he was killed when, a, when an arrest went bad. And it didn't look good. Nobody probably deserves to die like that. No, he did not deserve to die like that. But what? Karma came back and got him. He was a bad guy. He committed a lot of crimes. He... I can't say that on Now that, <laughs> well, that seems like a terrible thing for a black person to say. If I said that, you know how many bad... Remarks I would have on Facebook if I said something like that, even from my own family. Oh, you know what? I, because I have said it, I've gotten plenty of bad comments uh, from black friends. But I'm sorry, if you're a bad person, you're a bad person. And when you do bad, bad's going to come back at you. And that was his bad coming back to him. 
Yeah, uh, you know, the the thing, the truth is it. The truth is, it's a low statistic probability. You're more likely as a black person to be shot by a black cop than you are a white cop, and you're definitely more likely to be shot by a black person if you're a white person, and you're really more likely to be shot by a black person if you're a black person. I see all these um, deaths in these big cities, you know, by the hundreds every week. We hardly even hear about that. I mean, somebody doesn't post it on Facebook to bring it to our attention. The media doesn't seem to want to cover it. Nobody seems to want to take care of it. Al Sharpton doesn't seem to be down there. Jesse Jackson doesn't seem to be solving the problem. All this black on blacks getting killed, all these little babies, these wonderful people that don't deserve to die are dying, and yet we're protesting white cops killing black people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, it's a small percentage of that happening. And you have the organization that's supposed to be supportive of black lives, black lives matter. But for them, they, they don't matter because they're not doing anything to help out and stop the, the violence in the big cities. They're ignoring it. And by ignoring it, in my opinion, that's promoting it. Well, you would kind of think so. In all of this rioting, <laughs> one black guy dies because a cop didn't do what he was supposed to do the way he's supposed to do it. One black guy dies. How many black guys die? How many black people died in the looting and the rioting? How many black businesses were destroyed? How many complexes that were set up to help black people were completely destroyed? How many white people that were supportive of black people may not be quite as supportive now. What kind of damage do you think that has been done? Uh, there's been a lot of damage and it's not going to be undone. Um, and eventually when people come to their senses, I think that a lot of black people are going to lose a lot of respect in, in communities. You know, people are going to now be, uh, you know, want to distance themselves away from their supposed cause because all they're showing is the bad and the evil. You know, when other races, something bad happens, they don't go crazy. They don't go stupid. Like I said, when conservatives, when we lost the election twice to Obama, right. we didn't riot. We didn't go crazy. There was always a talk, too. You know, I'd always heard. If a black man ever gets to the White House, he's going to be lynched. He'll never allow that. He'll, he'll be shot the first 24 hours. Looked like he was pretty well embraced. He was. And if he would have did some of the things that he was, even if he would have uh, been a Clinton, I mean, President Clinton, at least worked with the Republican Congress and got a lot of stuff done. I mean, Obama said that the Republicans can just take a back seat in the, in the car and uh, watch what we do, you know, watch what we do. So yeah, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of truth there's a lot of truth to that. You mean to tell me that if um, the percentage of white people that are criminals, if one of them happened to be strangled by a black cop during arrest, white people are going to go crazy. They're going to burn down their own you know. I, I don't know. Anyway, you get that part. How about that black lady that was on, on there and they was talking about white privilege? What do you think about white privilege? I mean, be, you know, Rashawn, believe me, the one thing about Rashawn, he's seeing everything that's exactly how he thinks about it. He's not hiding anything. He's not holding anything back. These are his true, you know, true feelings. I've heard him. I've heard him enough time. White privilege. I obviously have white privilege. I am better than you. Oh, I, and I, I see your white privilege every morning when you're out picking up dog poop. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, like it brings up a good point. What time you get up this morning? I was up at 5. Yeah, well, he was up earlier than me. I wasn't up till 5.30. All right, so 5.30, we're both up early. There's your white privilege. Yeah, I got to Half that. hour. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but the other day, you slept in until 7. Oh, <laughs> that's know, true. Only because you wasn't feeling good, but... White privilege, I guess. But anyway, that lady was, I didn't watch the whole thing you did. She was being interviewed by that black guy. Mm -hmm. And that black lady was, you know, trying to trying to make the argument that whites have privilege. Do whites have privilege? Not that I really see. How would you define it? What would the reason that the whites, you know, what are they confusing, you think, white privilege with? 
good work ethic, stable families. Yeah. Um, well, working a little bit of pride in yourselves. And she even brought that up. Why? She, did, did, maybe you can explain. Remember what she said to part about the white something about the white people showing up for their kids' games or. How's, how's yeah, because she's say? basically saying, well, you know, they have, fa you know, they, they support their families, and they, yeah, they they have families, and and that's true. But even though in today's time, the white family isn't as family oriented as it was back in the seventies and eighties, but compared to your average black family, it's a thousand times more stable. Well, it brings up a good point. There was a time in history in the fifties or sixties that actual blacks had a lower divorce rate than whites. Yeah, and even growing up in the seventies and eighties, blacks families were, were solid and they were they were good, you know, they 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 were very, very close and then all of a sudden something happened. What happened? Probably the Democrats really came into power. You had the Clintons, you know, and uh, well, then we know about the Obama years. Well, there's a good book out. You know, we know Candace Owens. If you get a chance, watch Candace Owens. If you want to learn about uh, Muslims, you know, there's a lady named Bridget. I can't remember Bridget's last name. Listen to her. There's Burgess Owens, who was the football star. He's running for some office, I think, in Utah. He has a book out. Burgess Owens has a book out. Uh, and he's a Republican. And he really goes into black history. He goes into the Republican Party, the Democratic Party. And he says, and you and I have talked about it before, that, you know, because of welfare taking, you know, the blacks out of the family uh, caused a huge problem that we've never able, been able to escape from. But he also talks about a lot of other stuff too. These cities that are controlled by Democrats and you notice one thing that that Trump did is he deregulated a lot of regulations mm -hmm. and that's been good for a lot of businesses and Burgess goes into that hey there's too many regulations for a black entrepreneur in a city because I can't get the permits. I can't get the union work. The unions are, are keeping us down. If I need a, a, a laborer, I have to pay too much for it. I can't use somebody that's, that's not specifically so much skill, skill involved. So there's a lot more going on behind the scenes than we want. You know, we have teacher unions that doesn't allow, you know, for you know, vouchers and and the, the communities are low incomes are hard, having a hard time having choices to work, how we're going to educate educate our, our kids, and then we have what's going taught being taught in the you know in in the colleges. So there's a lot of stuff that's happening. I don't think that actually happened because we were trying to do bad. I think that they were trying to do good, and the results just happened to be bad. You know, it's like you got to have all these regulations. You you go into to L.A. down. You try to start a hamburger stand. You're, you know, you're you're a black person or a white person doesn't have a lot of money. Black person doesn't have a lot of money. You know, you're trying to to be an entrepreneur. Be a little tough to be an entrepreneur in a big city. It's, it's tough to be one anywhere. But well, think if we had to go through the permits and all the stuff that we had in a big city just to run our kennels, how hard it might be. It might be very difficult. But if I wanted to start a hamburger stand or a restaurant. And I didn't have the money. It might be how much you think permits would be. Well, wow, you're probably a couple hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, even if it's fifty thousand, it's it's too much. I can come in and open a McDonald's because look at all the money I have. I already know how to do the permits. I already have the lawyers. McDonald's can go up every place. But you know, um, traditionally, I mean, let's be honest. Black people are fantastic people. They have a great culture. Extremely talented. Their music has always been fantastic. Their their the athletic ability has been just wonderful. A lot of stuff that's been accomplished has been great. In the cooking areas is no slouch. Yeah. You know <laughs> blacks have blacks you married a white woman, you didn't get the cooking a lot. No, I did not get the cooking part. Nah, my mom was a great cook, I can't complain. And uh, Kim's not too bad. But, you know, these restaurants and stuff, you know, here we have a lot of Mexican restaurants. Rashawn and I both love Mexican restaurants. We love Mexican food and we're always trying new places in town. When we go in, we're trying places and, you know, carne asada burritos is what we judge a lot of stuff by. Yeah. 
A lot of the Mexican families are able to start restaurants and do good in the business and, and do a good job here. And, and that's the way the black community ought to be able to do too. But also another point is how hard would it be to start a, any type of business in a gang infested area? Well, why would you? Why would you? See, it's tough. It's not the white person that's putting, that's keeping the black men down. I mean, yeah, I guess maybe it is in some respects because of a, a, a lot of the rules and regulations and stuff. But we've got to the point where a segment of an, our American society has has turned pretty violent, and there's a lot of gangs, and it crosses the board. And it's just not blacks. We just hear about blacks because. Is a lot of violence, but how about all the mafia crap? How about all the 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 crooked white po politicians that are in there? How about all the people that are just evil people we've always we've always had, and it's that's and that's the bottom line. You know who do you want to be around? I want to be around somebody like Rashawn. It's fun and honest. You know we want people like who who did you who was your favorite person growing up? Your grandmother. You know. We loved our grandmother because she was nice and sweet and kind and loved us. And you know, why don't we be more? Why don't we be more like you know our our grandma? Um, it's a tough situation. I don't know how many you know. At least this gets Rashawn and I um, a chance to get some stuff off our our chest. It gets us a chance to and back in our studio. Yeah, back in the studio gives us a chance to bond and actually makes us feel like the world is a good place. A world is complete. You know, because there's no 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 boundaries, no barriers, you know, in, in our in the way we think and our beliefs, and uh, you know, no matter what, we're going to be down here. And we're going to be taking care of ourselves. So we're going to be taking care of our families. And so Rashawn and I have a lot of friends, and you know, if it, in in business, if it comes up to where, you know, I can't sell puppies, and Rashawn should sell puppies, it's kind of like, you know, I mentioned this really before, but. I was reading someplace or watching someplace that in one of the country, undeveloped countries, one person had like an electronic store, and his buddy next to him had a battery store. And people would ask him, well, why don't you just do electronics and batteries? And it's like, well, I don't do electronics and batteries because if I did, I put my buddy here out of business, and he needs to sell batteries. So this is a team effort. You know, I could train dogs. We could, I, Alex. You know, Alex is here. I could train dogs. Rashawn trains dogs. I don't train dogs. I mean, how many Desert Point kennel dogs have you got in lately to train? Wow, a lot. Six. Yeah, because they don't have any natural ability. <laughs> so, you know, so Sean does that because that's where his business is. And, he's, and he raises puppies besides. And it's like, so I, within my business and who I am, can prosper what I'm doing. But I can send, you know, um, Rashawn business and the training stuff. And, and he can, you know, do that. And then we can do a lot of stuff, you know, together. And and, and that's great. I, that's the way that it should be. I've... I've dealt with people before. If, if I I couldn't even use their frozen semen that they never really, you know, because I might be you know affecting their business. I can't possibly sell you this dog for breeding program because you're in the same state I'm in, and if you raise these puppies, it's going to affect my business. That's not us. No. Nope. You know, and you know, and so that you know that kind of keeps us that kind of keeps us sane. So you know. I don't know. If you walk away with anything from, you know, from the video, so be it. You know, at least we got it out there. And we, you know, for you Democrats that think, or you people out there that think that the the Republicans aren't united, nonsense. You know, we're more united with Trump and the Republican Party and their beliefs as we've ever, ever been. And uh, for you people that are already on our side and already have the same views, that we have, it's it just it'll strengthen what you believe because it's one thing to say, especially if you live somewhere and you don't have black friends, that oh, I'm not racist, I don't have white friends. But you can look at you know the people that really do have black friends and black people that do have white friends and 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 I you know it's it's my daughter's, you know my daughter dates you know her boyfriend's black. You know, Crystal, my other daughter, 
you know, she has a lot of black friends and